Ten years ago, a man named Sissel took a little girl named Lynn hostage, and then was killed by a meteorite fragment. Tonight, a man named Sissel met a detective named Lynn at the junkyard on the edge of town, and then was killed by a bullet. But the scene I find waiting for me on the other end of the phone line feels like the final nail in the coffin of my lost memory. I see myself. There you are, Commander Sith. Finally. Sissel, where have you been, my good man? We've been looking everywhere for you. Had a little unfinished business to take care of. Didn't think it would take this long. What about your people? They sure went out of their way to mess me up. I say, I believe we've fulfilled every one of your conditions in our little deal. What right do you have to complain about anything outside of our bargain? We can talk about that when we get together. This will be our last communication by telephone. We'll arrive in one hour. I look forward to seeing you, Sissel. Dawn is approaching. The darkness surrounding my own mystery is deep, but I know it's always darkest before the dawn. Hmm, yes, we're nearing off the final stages of our little deal, my good man. Yes, sir. All preparations are complete, sir. And we just had a report, sir. Lights have been spotted, sir. Have they now? By all means, let me have a look. <laughs> yes, we're very close. We will now disconnect from the communication cable and have no service until we arrive, sir. Very well. Nice try, Inspector Cabanella, but you should you could never stop me. See ya, sucker. Hello guys and welcome to TG on the Game Nerd, the show where I talk about our play games and today we're going to be playing Ghost Trick Phantom Detective. In the last episode, we learned a bit more about what transpired 10 years ago. And in this episode, we just had, like, the weirdest opening to an episode of all time. First of all, there's another us walking around. Second of all, that weird, like, you know, funny villain guy, he was in a submarine in that room. Uh, third of all, uh, and the least weird out of all of these, Inspector Cabanella is dead. And in the last episode, he was talking about... Uh, the kidnappers and how the ransom needed, not the ransom really, but the execution needed to go through. Uh, so, very interesting. For this, my, the voices that I'll be doing for, for Sissel here, like the one we're playing as, and then the man in red that we just saw that was all mean and weird and working with the British guy. Uh, for the one we're playing as, I'll just be doing my normal voice, something like this, and then for the uh, other guy, I'll just be doing something a bit more deep and a bit more sinister. Uh, it'll be kind of hard to do a different voice, because I want it to be similar, but not too similar to where you can't really tell it apart. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and begin the episode. So, that submarine guy and his people have a deal going with me, do they? If that's the case, they probably aren't the ones who killed me, right? Anyway, there's definitely something behind the inspector's death. I think I'd better talk to him. I mean, not much else we can do. Hey, do you think you could wake up for me? 
Oh boy, still unconscious, eh? I guess he hasn't been dead for very long then. I'll just go ahead and go back to four minutes before his death. I'm a little nervous about what I might see there, though. But if that's where my, I'm going to find my answers, I can't run away from it. Once the criminal gets the punishment he deserves, the hostage will go free. Carry out the execution immediately and wait for our call. That's a good boy. Gee, a hostage sure is a handy thing. Gives me complete control over the top police inspector in the country. Ah, what's the matter? All of those broken bones smart a bit? What's it like to feel pain? Does it make you feel alive? Why are you doing this? Now, is that any kind of question for the top inspector to ask? Isn't it obvious? Revenge, of course. Revenge on all the people who stole my life away ten years ago. Don't be ridiculous. It was me to write that stole your life. Or have you forgotten that? Wrong. I was murdered by all of you. Detective Jowd, who chased me down and forced me into a corner even though I was innocent. Lynn, that little girl who was right there when I was running. Lynn, she was just an innocent little girl playing in the park. If that brat hadn't been there, I never would have thought of taking a hostage. That's the most self-centered garbage I've ever heard. And finally, you, Inspector Cabanella. Me. If you hadn't done what you did, I never would have pointed a gun at that kid. You were so proud of your spotless record. My case was the one blot on it, wasn't it? Only two people know the real truth. Me and Detective Jowd. I bet tonight's execution will be quite a relief to you, won't it? One of the people who know about the strain on your record will disappear for good. That's why you didn't help him escape from prison. That's the kind of guy you are. I got nothing to say to you. You'd never listen anyway. Ye gods. Now then, Inspector. Time to make a big red stain on your spotless white coat. This was another condition of my deal. To wipe out everybody who knew about Temzik. Revenge. That's what I'm up to? None of this makes any sense. Hey, man. Mind tell me what's going on? Inspector Cabanella, he's awake. My head is spinning, baby. I'm out of understand. That Cabanella character who just got shot is me. Uh, that's right. And you're supposed to be the scoundrel there who just shot me? I, uh, guess so. But you couldn't be, could you? Huh? After all, the guy in the red suit just walked out the door, right? So, who are you? I guess I just have to face it. I'm not that Sissel guy. I... I'm somebody who's searching for himself. That's why I'm here to save you. At the very least, you have information about that red guy in red information I need. So, you came on a rescue mission now, did you? Nothing like the sound of that, baby. Because there's a very important life here somewhere, a life valuable to this nation. Okay, so do your thing, baby. So, the... The Sissel, the alive one, the evil one, he's often just referred to as the man in red. Uh, so, are you a manipulator too? I have ghost tricks, powers of the dead, yeah, but I can't control living creatures. Anywho, I think you better be very careful. That guy in red is a manipulator. Naturally, he knows about powers like yours. If you realize that you're here, things might get a little sticky. You're right, I better be careful. But, you may be asking, oh, look at him, there's that something emanating from his body, 
Is it really a sign of having special powers of the dead? That's very interesting. So we've seen that emanating from both him and the corpse at the beginning. Uh, but there's also, you might have noticed in the last episode, there's that weird stuff coming off of something else. So if you can spot it, go ahead and check out the previous episode and see if you can spot it. Okay, so now there's a sort of bad ending not really here that you can get. Uh, Cabanella just mentioned that you need to be very careful because Evil Sissel, the man in red, uh, I'll just call him the man in red, he is uh, someone who's also acquainted with manipulator powers, and so he'll obviously notice this if something is going on. But what happens if we do make it very obvious? What's going on? I've never seen the ghost world like this. So you're here, are you? You sense my presence. I noticed you. You think you can stop me, do you? I don't know why you're wearing my face, but you might as well give up now. I control everything. Damn it. Everything including the life of this police inspector in white. Wait, don't shoot! This other me knows the powers of the dead as well. Who wouldn't notice what you just did? You're practically shouting, look at me, baby! It looks like it might be hard to save you under these circumstances. I guess I can't use my powers right in front of him like that. I guess I'd better rewind the clock again and see if I can pick up any other clues. Isn't that so cool how, you know, obviously he'd notice Powers of the Dead and then he looks at the camera to, like, talk to you? I think it's very sick. I'm gonna attach to this awfully hot coffee pot, or, uh, kettle, rather. I wanted to make the funny reference, so... They talk for a bit. Uh, we're waiting for when he slams his hand hand down on the uh, the what would this be called? Not really like is that considered a stove? Whatever. Now we can go downstairs, and this place is absolutely destroyed. What in the world happened here? To think I'm think I'm starting to remember. Something bad happened here, and now there's another death line hidden here. What? Another death? Didn't I tell you from the start? Didn't I say there was a very important life valuable to the nation here? I thought you were talking about you. Oof, I'm just a crazy character white coat, baby. Hey, come to think of it, where is that old pigeon guy? So you can probably tell now who the death is supposed to be. And yep, we can confirm right there with the ghost world that, uh... Lying deep underneath the rubble. That's probably one of the worst ways to go. I mean, most ways of dying are bad. Actually, scratch that, all ways of dying are bad. But, you know, still, being crushed is probably, like, you know, horrible, especially if you have, like, claustrophobia or something like that. Um, excuse me. Are you awake? Of course. I never sleep during work hours. Professor, do you recognize me? There's only one crazy character in a white coat that I know. He hasn't lost his memory. I'm not the type who likes losing things, but never mind that. Cabanella, this is quite a surprising guest you brought with you. Pretend like he didn't just blow up the place. Are you talking about me? Oh, this is a different guy, and I'm his guest, actually. Said he came to rescue us. Unlike you, my shop friend still hasn't gotten his memory back. <laughs> Pitiful. Ouch, that hurts. Anyway, now that we'll be going back four minutes before your death. In order to change your fate, that is. But aren't we already in the past, man? We can go back even further. I've done it before. 
I still don't see a path to save Inspector Cabanella, but if we go back further, maybe I'll find a lead. How many times do I have to tell you, Professor, this place is dangerous? Don't be daft. I can't leave now. I forget what voice I did for him. He's completely dead, but just as I thought, I'm getting a reading. This is the source of his powers. If I remove it... He's not dead. He's just not there. The true form of the manipulator isn't something you can detect. It's a spirit. Oof, ridiculous. <laughs> so, you figured it all out, huh? You're a clever man, Inspector Cabanella. So it's really true. Y you're... I wasted a lot of time tonight because of you, Inspector. But it's all just like you said. I died ten years ago. This body is just a vessel. A shell. I control everything. The shell. People. Just like I control the Justice Minister and Lin. So it's true. You were manipulating my baby that time? You made her shoot your shell. But why? Why would you do a thing like that? To create conclusive evidence. You know, on that security tape. Now she's a murderer too. She'll suffer just like Jow did. Now then, Professor. I'm afraid it's time for you to die. I don't have any grudge against you. I'm even grateful to you. Oh yeah? So why don't you live, let me live then? I'll be leaving this country forever tonight. But before I do... I need to erase all evidence that these powers of mine exist. Along with this contraption in this room. This time, the thing will work the way it was meant to, and it'll be all over. Cupid won't turn this time. He'll shoot his little arrow this way. Professor, look out! Dynamite, eh? When the devil did he put that there? He planned it all out too, tonight. Having my baby shoot him, having the corpse disappear. His corpse disappeared. That medical examiner, remember him? He was a complete and utter imposter. He said he was going to take the corpse back to the lab, but he'd already made a deal with the manipulator to meet him and give him back his body. But I wasn't going to let that happen, baby. You saw through that plan, eh? I noticed right away that when the medical examiner didn't know the first thing about examining a body. I knew he was a fake, so I tracked him down and bought him off. Bought him off. Adam smuggled the corpse into this room. I thought we could find the source of his powers. Of course, never in my wildest dreams did I think his abilities were the powers of the dead. Anyway, there isn't much time. He's leaving the country before dawn. And I'm gonna follow him, of course, after I save you two. But something's been nagging at the back of my mind. I remember when Ray said what Ray said to me tonight. He said that spirits cease to exist when the day breaks, but if that's true, how could a spirit from ten years ago still be here? No time for thinking now, baby. Action is the name of the game. Work your magic and take us back even further into the past. Alright, man. Jump in there and stop that explosion, would you? Easy enough for you to say. Foolish of you to say, too. If you stop the explosion, he'll just do me in some other way. Fair enough, man. Then jump in there and take care of that man in red, would you? I repeat, easy enough for you to say. 
and most likely impossible to boot. That huge explosion didn't even make him bat an eye. Well, what do you propose then, Professor? Pray tell. Your best bet is to save me during the explosion without him noticing. He's enough for you to say. Jeez, what's with all these people? Anywho, jump in there and do something. Um, but looking around, there's not really much that we can do here. I mean, we can try opening this. It's no use. I can't open it. Could the fact that the professor is standing on it have anything to do with it? I may look small, but I'm pretty heavy with that. He sounds so proud of that fact, too. This door! Such a pity! Too bad it doesn't open downward. Sometimes life can be so hard. Wouldn't you agree, Professor? Yeah, that's why we're both dead! <laughs> hmm, a door that opens downward, eh? We have this medical device. What in the world is this thing? This device has that meteorite data entered into it. If it detects Temzik radiation, it responds. Got that, kid? It's lovely, th isn't it a lovely thing? I guess sometimes it's important not to think about things too much. Oof, what a sorry pair. If the measuring device, for a second I thought that was like his actual body. But, and we can't go down here either. We can't get up there to that contraption or up to the toolbox. So what is there to do? As you perhaps have already noticed, time is running out, baby. Yeah, no perhaps about it, I know. But you know, there aren't a whole lot of things I can use my ghost tricks on in here. It looks like it's all over. Unless, unless I find another path, I'm sort of at a deadlock here. Sissel. Hey, I know that voice. Help me. Where are you? Find me. Before I'm carried away. Hmm. What's that frail Santa call for help? He's here somewhere. A friend of yours? Yep, the little guy that looks a little fragile, but has strength that'd surprise you. Well, he's asking for you to find him. And before he's carried away, no less. But I'm almost out of time. Should I look for him? Indeed we should. Sissel, here I am! Oh, hey, it's... Missile! What are you doing there? Do you really have to ask? Seriously, are you really going there? Uh, no, that's okay. Never mind. Anyway, I need your powers. Will you help me out? Of course! Here, let me come join you. Okay, here I am, Sissel. Now maybe things will flow in a new direction even though the flow of the sewer is a little bit stinky. So it looks like we didn't have to wait too long for Missile to arrive once again. So I want to go back all the way over here, and we have these two similar looking objects, and there's not much else we could do, so let's go ahead and swap. Now that's what I'd call some proper commotion. They're making that trash can dance. Truth be told, I feel a bit like dancing now myself. It's getting harder and harder to hold my wild instincts back. What a dangerous bunch. Now that we've got everything set up there, this trash can lid starts moving over there. We swap the tire and the lid. Swap it so the trash can lid is up there. And so now that it's flat, I want to go ahead and take that, and this will get out of the way. We swap it with the hatch there. Look out! Sorry, little pigeon. As for you, Inspector, uh, I have a little job for you. 
I can't move. I think I have four or five broken bones. I don't mind. It won't prevent me from manipulating you. It might make it hurt a little bit when I move you, though. Quite a bit, actually. D damn you! I can't believe it. You lot actually pulled it off. Sorry, Inspector Cabanella. I couldn't do anything to help you. And there I am, a poor, broken heap of arms and legs. But no matter, I enjoyed the show. The magic disappearing act, that is. Nothing like it, baby. Yeah, except, unlike a normal magic trick, I'm the one that managed to vanish without a trace here. What's the matter? You look like you'd rather be dead. Not that you aren't. I was just remembering the fact that, right about now, the real me is giving the poor just a minister a real fright. On that phone... On that phone call... Oh. Okay. They don't really give you an indication in these flashbacks and stuff like that who's talking, so I have to go through like two or three different characters before I finally realize who it actually is. Oh, that phone call. Yeah, I was pretty upset. Um, excuse me, mister. Hmm? You really shouldn't be mean like that. And what's this lovely little creature? Uh, this little dog is the warrior who kept keeps Camilla safe. Or he would be if he was actually still full of life. Camilla. Gods in heaven, what a terrible thing. That poor little girl taken hostage. It's a cruel twist of fate indeed. Wait just a minute. Miss Camilla is a hostage? Yes, we're sorry, little warrior. Miss Camilla? A hostage? What's a hostage? Anyway, Inspector Cabanella, it's time to save your life now. But you couldn't get very far when you tried before, am I right? But this time it's different, right, Sissel? That's right. With us working together, it's a whole different situation. We'll save the Inspector in white, and then we'll go to rescue Camilla, okay? Okay, let's hurry up and get through this. Gee, kid, you're making me feel like an afterthought. All right, let's get started. Inspector Cabanella is upstairs, so our first step is to get up there. Sizzle, I'll go up first and wait for you. Okay, lovey dove, we need your help. Carry this measuring device upstairs. It has a Mr. Ghost in it, so don't drop it. And we get a nice ride on back upstairs, so we don't really need to worry about finding a way back up through various trials and tribulations. What do you have to say, Cecil? You've got grit, little pigeon. I'd better get up there before the little pigeon's strength gives out. Missile is waiting for me. I'd better hurry. I wonder if it actually is possible for the pigeon to for the pigeon to like give out. Yeah, it looks like he's struggling there, so let's go ahead and get right back up here. There you are, Sissel. Sorry for the wait, Missile. Four minutes from now, the inspector will be killed by a gun. You just jump in there and stop him from firing, would you? Ugh, there you go again with that stuff. Besides, it doesn't make any sense. If you stop him from firing, he'll just kill you some other way. Wait a minute, that sounds familiar. Yep, same situation as mine. Your best bet this time around is to allow him to shoot and then save Cavanella without him noticing. Whew, it's even worse than last time. Anywho, jump in there and do something. Okay, I'm ready to jump in, Sissel. Don't forget, whenever you want to use my powers, just touch the missile icon. Alrighty, so last... Uh... Last section right here. So we've got to go ahead and wait for the man in red to slam his ha hand down on the stove again so that we can go ahead and climb up there. So he does that, and this time with the lamp here, we're actually going to wait for him to turn around so he doesn't look at us. He does the funny point, turns around, I turn that around. Oh, did you see that? The bat sizzle turned around. Do you have, do you have to call him that? 
But yeah, maybe this is our chance to try some ghost tricks. This is the only time he takes his eyes off me too. If you have something to do, do it now. Time to take the first steps toward saving the inspector. So with this hard hat right here, we want to go ahead and knock it off right there. That makes him turn around. What was, what was that? I got nothing to say to you. You never listen anyway. Ah, okay. So I see what we're supposed to do here. We're supposed to wait for him to come back around here. And so now we can go ahead and move the step ladder. But now we're on a very tight time limit, so let's go ahead and do this quickly. Uh, missile, get out of the way here. We've got this uh, little beanie over here. Reminds me of another Shu Takumi game. Or Shu Takumi, excuse me. Uh, but I, I don't want to say what it is because of spoilers. Uh, you over here. How are you supposed to... Okay, Sissel comes back over here. Okay, Missile goes back here. Oh, Missile is supposed to ride on the beanie there. I don't know why I forgot that that was movable because we just, or attachable because it, we just attached to it a little bit ago. We'll go ahead and swap you for you. What that does is it makes a very specific shape with that beanie. And that shape, we want to go ahead and attach to it. Well, would you look at that? Right on the hook. I love knit hats. So warm and most of most of all soft. Hey, now that I'm looking at it, that hat is the same shape as the helmet you just knocked down. Aha, I thought so. So we're about to do something really cool right here. We wait for him to fire. It's going to shoot. It's too late. Again? I'm going to get shot again? No, wait. Our chance is coming up. Last split second, right? Leave it to me. Would you like at that? The bullet is hanging in midair between the gun and the inspector's forehead. Now's our chance. I'm here in the bullet right now. Let's swap this little thing with something else. What? It's our only hope. There's got to be something here with the same shape and direction as the bullet. I never saw the bu I never saw a bullet before. It's such a cute little shape, doesn't it? I can check out the bullet shape on the top screen. Okay, got it. Now I know what it's shaped like. I don't think he noticed. Looks like you pulled off another magic disappearing act. <laughs> and now I say again, I love knit hats. So warm and most of all soft. Did I, did I do all right? You did a fine job, little one. You saved another life. And I'll keep doing it too, over and over. What I saw in just these four minutes gave me all the answers I've been looking for. I'll uh, research these past 10 years' tales in comparison, right, Professor? So you two were working together. That's about the size of it, yeah? Who would believe a story about a manipulator? So we pursued it ourselves, just the two of us. I'm quite a crazy character myself, after all. Okay, let's hurry back. Back to our time. We have to rescue Miss Camilla. You're right, Missile. And there's a certain guy I have to follow, too. So an interesting little thing is, you know that hard hat that was on the uh, little hook there before we changed it around? Uh, that actually, if you swap that with the bullet, it still kills Cabanella anyway, just because it's a hard object moving at a very fast speed. Uh, after completing his revenge on Inspector Cabanella, the man in red left. And now, a new story is about to unfold in a new present. How are you feeling, you old crazy character? Eh, 
Hey there, Prof. We both alive, I see. Yeah, nothing like it, baby. But I don't know if I'm getting old or what. I've got a few aches and pains here and there. Used to be a little... Used to be a little thing like an explosion wouldn't bother me. Yeah, right, like I'm going to believe that. So what? The guy in red is gone, eh? Just in case, I've posted special investigation units all around the building. Let's just pray the boys came through for us. Damn it! You picked a bad time not to listen to me, buddy of mine. Hey, at least they're alive. Well, it looks like the both of their, their deaths were erased. Unfortunately, in the case of the Inspector and White, I can't call it a complete success. But in any case, these two have the information I need to start tracking the manipulator. I'd better talk to them. If I knew things were going to end up like this, I would have tried to die in that explosion, baby. That way I could have been dancing after Big Red by now. Hmm. I might be able to erase deaths, but it's true I can't do much about injuries. But really, you shouldn't talk that way. Yes, sir, I suppose you're right. I just hate feeling so helpless. He was right there within my grasp. All our plans we're resting on tonight, and then this had to happen. I guess he's thinking about his spotless record. It's not too late, Inspector. We still have a chance. Maybe I can catch him. Say, you're right. That's not a bad idea. I'll, co I'll cooperate with you fully. Go ahead and fire away with any questions you like, Mr. Ghost. That guy mentioned revenge. Revenge against the people who stole his life away ten years ago. Oof, he's a fool. He's the one who made that decision to take the little girl hostage and he wound up dead. He only has himself to blame. But what about when he said this? I was murdered by all of you. Detective Zhao who forced me into a corner, Lin the girl who's playing in the park, and finally you, Inspector Cabanella. If you hadn't done what you did, I never would have pointed a gun at that kid. Yes, ten years ago on that day, the Special Investigation Unit was working on a certain big case. We hauled in a young man, an important witness to our investigation, and then I did it. I made two very stupid mistakes. Detective, I'm telling you, I don't know anything about it. Fine, fine. You're under no obligation to talk, of course. But if you don't, the special investigation you can make the rest of your life a living hell. B but I... I've just been assigned to the special investigation unit, you see. They didn't share much info on big cases with a newbie like me yet. And I wanted to impress them. It was only, it was only supposed to be a simple matter of taking a statement. But I was too green. I pushed him too hard. I drove him into a corner and made him lose all hope. That was my first mistake. And then I made another mistake on top of that. Cabanella, got a minute? The chief wants to see you about your report. Got it. I'll be right there. You stay right here and be a good boy now. And that's when I did it. I left it behind in the interrogation room. My gun. How could you? I used my, he used my gun to escape. What he said is true. If I hadn't made that mistake, he never would have had a gun to point at Lynn in the first place. We first found about the manipulator's existence during a certain overseas communication. Overseas communication. For natural security purposes, this country keeps tabs on the communications networks. This particular communication was making a deal with a certain foreign country. Said he wanted them to buy him, him and his powers. That's how we, fir we first heard of him. Of course, we didn't know what he looked like at the time. And in order to prove these powers of his, he gave them two predictions. He, saw he foresaw two completely preposterous, impossible cases. The case of a man who would sing national secrets during a live rock concert band broadcast. And the case of a man who would take the chief commissioner hostage in his own office. Hmm. Those two inmates at the special prison, eh? We kept tabs of their communications and launched an investigation. And then finally, we pinpointed where they were going to meet tonight and staked it out. 
That restaurant, the Chicken Kitchen. The manipulator plans on leaving the country tonight. On a submarine that belongs to the, the other country in this deal. S submarine? But we haven't been able to find out where it's going to surface. It's terrifying to think what would happen to the pow- It's terrifying to think what would happen if its powers would have fallen to their hands. Right, highly unlikely they'd use them for people peaceful purposes. And now they have that little girl as hostage. Camilla. We have to stop him before he leaves the country. This spotless record of yours, is it really that important to you? Of course, baby. In some ways, it's more important to me than my life. Than your life, eh? After all, it's because of my record that I'm able to get my hands on all intel as head of the Special Investigation Unit. And because of my position, I get to direct all aspects of the investigation into the Manipulator case. The Manipulator case? That's why you cared about your record so much? Of course, why else, baby? I just never could believe it, man. Jow, shoot Nalma. I didn't care that he confessed. There was definitely something more to this story. Some secret. I did everything I could to climb the ladder. Everything in my power. And then I finally found the answer. It took five long years, though. The manipulator, he's going to prove that Jout is innocent. What incredible determination. There's one thing I just don't understand. If you're so determined to help Detective Jout... Why didn't you help him escape from prison? That's an easy one, baby. Escape from prison is a crime. I wasn't about to... I wasn't about to help him commit a crime after spending five years trying to prove him innocent. And he... And he himself has to be executed, you know. As a man of the law, I had to make sure the execution was stopped legally. And that's why I brought him before the Justice Minister, too. I need to buy as much time as I possibly, possibly could, baby. So that's it, eh? But there's one little unfortunate result of all of this. Lynn completely misunderstood your intentions. Ha! Huh, what's a little misunderstanding? My baby will come around. Give it, give it time. But there are more important things to do with our time tonight. Mr. Superintendent, do you have to mind? Do you mind if I talk to you for a minute? I haven't always been a junkyard superintendent, you know. I used to be part of the police. The police, huh? Not as a detective, but as a medical exam examiner. I investigated victims' cause of death. Ten years ago, I was asked to autopsy a strange corpse. Hit by a meteorite fragment and died instantly. That's what the police report said. There were no signs of life. He was definitely dead. But I never filed an autopsy report. That's because the corpse suddenly vanished, leaving behind only one clue. An unusual corpse. Or an unusual corpse. I bet that's what I've been chasing all night. Could you tell me more? Yeah, sure. I have an interest in you recovering your memory and finding your true identity, too. That's the only way I can describe it, too. It was an unusual corpse. He was dead, all right. No question about that. But there wasn't a scratch on him. Not a scratch, but I thought he was hit by a meteorite fragment. I don't understand it any more than you do. I was completely bewildered, but when I tried to autopsy him, I was even more puzzled. I couldn't perform the autopsy. You couldn't? What do you mean? The scalpel went in, but I couldn't cut. As soon as I tried to make an incision, it would heal up in the very next instant. That's how it went, and no scarring or blood either. And I never had the chance to solve the mystery. That's because the corpse up and vanished on us. The morgue is well guarded. Nobody could have stolen that body. But there is one way the corpse could have disappeared. What's that? A 
It got up, opened the door, and walked out on its own. What? He was dead, but he wasn't dead. We saw with our own eyes tonight, not even that explosion could kill him. And he didn't even feel it when he slammed his fist on that stove. The corpse left behind some data from the testing I did. I got some readings for some kind of radiation coming off that body. Radiation? I used all kinds of instruments, but I couldn't exactly determine what kind of radiation it was. Some undiscovered type from a world unknown. Wait a minute, could it be? That's right, it was coming from that meteorite fragment. I went to that park and tested the spot where the meteorite fell. And just as I expected, I detected radiation coming from that crater. It was the exact same pattern of radiation that, as that of the corpse. At that time, I thought he was some kind of a mortal being. He would die, only to come back to life. I wanted to research it all in depth, so I quit my job as a police medical examiner. Several years later, I came to learn the connection between my research and the manipulator case, thanks to the arrival of this crazy character here. Oh, stop now, Professor. Do you want to see me blush? It was about a year ago, I'd say. This man in white came dancing into my research lab here. I heard there was an eyeball here researching Temzik. Is that you, baby? How are you to be calling anybody an oddball? I was investigating the manipulator case then, and then I heard there was a man who'd quit the police force to study the meteorite. When I heard that, it was a, like a meteorite had struck me on the head. At the time, we were just starting to get leads on this manipulator. We didn't know who he was yet, but we knew he was communicating with a certain foreign country. In one of those communications, we heard the manipulator saying this. The source of my power is not of this world. And that's when I put two and two together, baby. The manipulator case and the Temzik were somehow connected. Which also explained how five years ago he used his powers to manipulate a birthday surprise a little girl made for her mother. He added that gun to the contrap. Forgot to read that. And that's it. So that contraption in the basement here, you built that to try and help Detective Jowd? That's right. Jowd and I worked together back when I, I was on the, with the Force. I used the reports of his case to try and recreate the device. But there was just one part of it that I couldn't reproduce no matter how hard I tried. Camilla told Jowd it did something it shouldn't have, made an impossible move. I added that part to the device I recreated. I put in a part that would allow a cupid to rotate, otherwise the gun wouldn't fire. So that must mean somebody manipulated Camilla's contraption. As a result, we proved to ourselves that a manipulator actually exists. Inspector Cabanella! Hey, baby. Sorry about that phone call. I must have sounded like a real villain. I hated to spoil your image of me. Of that cool cat inspector you always looked up to. Is that really the image she had of him? Inspector Cabanella, I'm sorry. I just heard you were chasing after that man all this time to try and help Detective Jowd. This manipulator is such a dangerous character. I was hoping you didn't have to be involved. So that's why you had me arrested tonight, isn't it? Like I always say, if somebody is in the way, throw him in the slammer. Yikes. Tonight. I really thought we finally had him. But my body gave out on me right in the critical moment. It's like a cruel joke. <laughs> but a joke is a joke. You might as well laugh. Jowd! The minister called off the execution order, and while he was at it, he let Detective Jowd go free until tomorrow morning, too. That's a pretty extreme while he was at it. Sorry I took so long to get here. You can leave the rest to me. 
there you go again. You've always been sick, been like that. You make everybody else run around and then you swoop in at the last second. Jowd. Five years ago, you left this coat with me just before you turned yourself in. I promise to give it back to you one day. I've been waiting so long, Detective Jowd. Waiting for this day to come. Thanks for not giving up on me, Lin. Okay, I'm off then. Good luck, my old friend. This present you gave me, it's just what I needed. Thank you. Glad you like it. Sissel, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. You and I have to go find that man. I need your help. Will you do this with me? Sure, but how? We don't know where the submarine is and the phone line doesn't work. They use communication cables to make their calls. We'll get you hooked up somehow. You'll see. Could you wait here until we do, please? Okay, fine. I'm counting on you. This true self you're looking for. I bet you'll find it soon. Alright, I'm leaving, Inspector Cabanella. It's almost dawn. I'm not who I thought I was. I'm actually further from knowing who I am than ever. But now, I don't feel so alone. Each one of us, for his or her own reasons, is looking for the truth. Together, I think we can shed light on these mysteries and drive, me, drive away the darkness. But it's almost dawn. 